biographers are trying to capture a life. They can't make it up. This isn't fiction. This is a biography of a Connecticut Yankee who left school at age 15 and always wanted to have a life at sea. He went to Boston, Massachusetts and joined a company that was doing trade with West Africa. He ended up spending 30 years of his life living in West Africa. This is a very modern book in that it might not have happened had there not been eBay. I wanted very much to find a subject that would link my being in the diplomatic corps and with Senegal. And I went on eBay and I wrote in Senegal and a number of items turned up, including an envelope that had been written to Captain Peter Strickland, Gore, West Africa. It came from Boston, that's where I was born. It was sent to West Africa, that's where I spent 17 years of my life working as a diplomat. And I said, I have a link here. I bid on it and I won it. So just with one piece of paper, I had an amazing invitation to look deeper into who this man was. He started as a cabin boy and ended up as a sea captain at age 24. And he took to Africa in his schooners and his bark and his brigantines, mainly tobacco from Tennessee and Kentucky. He took at least 40 trips across the Atlantic. All of his trips were in the age of sail, no steamboats. He started his diary at age 19. His last entry in his diary was at age 83. He wrote a daily diary for 64 years. Peter Strickland was a patriotic man. Living in the French colony, he flew an American flag above his home. The American flag is probably six times bigger than the French flag. So Peter Strickland was making a very in-your-face commentary about the exaggerated presence of the one American in a French colony. Gore Island is a small island, 45 acres, off the capital city of Dakar in Senegal. There are not many things that are written about this island, and I have a whole chapter about Peter Strickland having spent 30 years on the island. When the American embassy in Senegal sponsored my trip to Senegal to give talks, at the end of my talk in the town hall, a woman stood up and started singing. And she started singing in the Mandinka language. This woman was a praise singer, and they used to sing the praises of the warriors, of all the battles that had been fought and won, but they also sing praises when they are moved by something, when they are pleased and they want to share their appreciation of something. In 1998, President Clinton made an official visit to Africa. One of his stops was Senegal. In Senegal, he went to Gore Island, he gave a talk, and he had a rest stop in the courtyard of the Peter Strickland house. And can you imagine what would be going through the mind of Peter Strickland if he knew that the courtyard of the home that he lived in would be visited by an American president?